Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I continue to explore NASA's nuclear thermal propulsion architecture, or at least the current proposal for it. And I have plotted our maneuvers to get to Mars, though they cost a bit more than the plan had, uh, because our opportunity is different. They are looking at a 2033 fast conjunction. Uh, they would be very lucky if they actually get this nuclear architecture ready by 2033. But anyway, that is a particular opportunity uh, that probably would not require this mid-course adjustment. Basically, we are in the situation where the ascending and descending node with respect to Mars is in the least convenient position in our orbit. Uh, I, I don't know if you can see, but basically where the Earth's orbit crosses Mars's orbit is way out instead of close to where we're doing the burn. And so we have to do a separate, well, we don't have to do a separate burn. We can bake that into this burn. But uh, th the reason I don't want to bake it into this burn is I'm afraid that when we reach Mars, if we do that, uh, we'll be ending up going too fast. Uh, this way we can arrive at Mars very slowly and that will make up for the fact that we have to do this extra burn potentially. So in their plan, NASA has a 160 day trip, which would lead us to arrive at Mars about there-ish. Um, so we're taking extra long to make up for the fact that we have to do the extra burn there. And um, we also have a higher orbit than we had before because of all the rendezvousing. Uh, now we have basically a three day orbit. So this maneuver is in three days and seven hours. So this maneuver takes 784 meters per second. Their plan had 600 something. And then they didn't. They only had a minor RCS or OMS adjustment out here. And uh, we have a full nearly 800 meters per second to do there. And then we arrive at Mars in basically a year instead of half a year. So we're taking our time in order to minimize how much we do at Mars to capture. And so we capture in a high orbit with only 800 meters per second. I think their plan had much more than that. Mars orbit insertion in their plan was 1,668 meters per second. So it, it sucks having to have the crew take extra time to get there. Obviously, you wouldn't really want to do that. But you can take a look that their uh, planned 1,668 is basically this amount plus our mid-course adjustment amount. So it ends up uh, evening out, thankfully. So, yep. Yeah, uh, now, I don't know. Our, our tanks aren't precisely zero boil off right now. So I'm time warping in here. And so that's uh, th there were comments uh, that I think I ought to address. One comment was, why don't we just get rid of some of the tanks along the way? Just use them as drop tanks. And that's because we want to reuse them. They're exceptionally heavy tanks. They're not, they don't need to be that heavy to transfer fuel from uh, the surface of the Earth to high Earth orbit to refuel this. They're that heavy because they need to have zero boil off and also probably a lot of safety features so that, you know, their sensors and making sure things are okay for three years or longer because we want to reuse these things. Uh, possibly... They need safety features so that this thing can be used for many round trips to Mars, as opposed to just the few hours it would take to get from Earth, the surface of the Earth, to refuel this, or wherever you want to go to refuel this, you know, the moon, and then refuel this uh, in whatever orbit it's in. That's still just a few hours trip. You don't need to worry so much. The tanks will be much lighter than the tanks that we have on here. So let's take a look at it now. So that's one reason I think that the tanks are so heavy compared to, again, each of the segments, the main propell um, propellant segments, the dry mass is 10.7 tons when the propellant is only 27 tons. Well, there's also RCS fuel, which is 4 tons. The inert mass, which is there's also some unusable fuel that is accounted for, is 13 tons, while the gross mass is 44 tons. So we're talking about pretty heavy tanks compared to what we're used to. Uh, you know, they're much heavier than stock tanks, for instance. And in realism overhaul, normally we have much lighter tanks, but that's because those are sized for 
for launch and for the few hours that we need them for. They're not generally thought of as zero boil off or tanks that are supposed to last many years. So that's why these are heavy and why we would like to reuse them. Uh, it'll be much easier to just send fuel up to this and then these will be safe. And in a pinch, if for some reason one of these tanks failed, uh, these are independent segments with their own separate control. They had to be. Uh, I mean, well, at least they have the RCS. So we could separate off a tank and redock everything and the mission could still be safe like that. Also, the RCS system provides a backup if for in the rare case that all three of the nuclear engines would fail, which I doubt. Uh, so, yeah. Well, there's a lot more to talk about, but I think we should get on with this maneuver and hopefully do it accurately. The burn time is obviously not right. I don't actually know what the burn time of the engines is right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an exploratory puff here. Okay, 40 minutes. Well, we should probably at least point to the node, huh? I want to use caps lock so we don't use too much. So you won't see the RCS puffing, but it is sort of puffing, trying to turn. And I want to give it a little bit more time to do that turn. Okay, so 40 minutes, and it's about 800 meter per second burn. That's not, that's not a whole huge chunk of our delta V. It's like less than one sixth. So let's say eight minutes or so is what we're talking about as far as the burn time. As far as what they were expecting for this part, the Transmars injection, they were expecting 622 meters per second and a nearly six minute burn. But we're not too bad off compared to their estimates. I was expecting worse. But that's partly thanks to the fact that I've decided to go with a slower transfer to the moon, uh, to Mars. <laughs> Not to the moon. Moon would be easier. We have more Delta V to work with because we've burned off so much more of our RCS fuel. So this sort of genre of ship, uh, similar to what I would had with the Mars uh, transfer vehicle in my Mars colonization series is uh, I, I sort of think of them as longships for obvious reasons, but my definition of longships is in particular a ship that can spin on its axis so that it can generate artificial gravity. It has to be long enough and have a heavy enough counterweight in the back. In this case, this segment, it weighs about as much as that segment. So it can spin and provide uh, artificial gravity to some extent, not full Earth gravity or anything like that. Maybe not even Mars gravity. But, uh, I mean, it depends on how fast you can spin it without the crew getting sick, basically. Um, so, but some gravity will be better than nothing as far as, even if it's just a matter of cleaning up. Now, when it comes to needing NASA's help for tra the trajectory, what I really need to know at this point is, because we plotted everything up to where we get to Mars, right? Uh, the thing I need to know is, on the way back, is is the resulting orbit that we're getting into Mars in, right? Uh, this, let's take a look. See, it's high on this side, right? We're, we're low on one side, high on the other side, which is nice. If it turns out that when we eject out to get back to Earth, we can just break orbit this way. In other words, we're burning out of uh, periapsis. If, on the other hand, trans-Earth injection, when we leave Mars in two years, is up here, that's not good, right? We, uh, it won't be very efficient. We want to make sure that when we break orbit to come back to Earth, that maneuver occurs down here. And we could easily sort of move this periapsis over to this side if it turns out that that would be better for the return to Earth. But that's a bit of planning that I can't do right now, I don't think. Uh, it'll be just wildly inaccurate and it'll just, the game will totally lie to me about that. So that's just too far ahead for us to plan here. But NASA could do it. NASA would know which side of Mars it needed to be on in order to come back to Earth properly and to capture into that low, uh, that periapsis in the right place. So 
that's the kind of planning that uh, would be useful at this point. I genu I don't know if we're on the right side or not. We're going to find out. But I did uh, F5 this, so. Okay, spooling up. Hopefully we're on time because it's all very sensitive. This whole burn time indicator is still... Uh, it's partly KSB Interstellar's fault, I think. It might be KSB Interstellar. There's also persistent thrust that I think I have in here, yeah. I don't know if that fiddles around with things. I think we're a little bit early, so I'm gonna actually shut down right now. Okay, let's start up here. Okay, well, target... oops, target apoapsis is 254, 619. So let's just keep those up and shut it down at hopefully the right time. Okay, and correcting down a bit. But you can sort of see the inaccuracy in our burn has caused us to reach that apoapsis early by about 10 hours. So that's changed the whole situation again. So yeah, we once again have a choice of which side we want to go on. <laughs> It's either this side or the other side. In terms of capture, we can double check, but I don't expect there to be much of a difference in terms of how much it costs to capture, whether we go on one side or another. So 161 is about as tight as we can get around there. So here a bear capture is 800 meters per second. It's a little bit tilted with respect to the moons, but that's okay because we're not rendezvousing with the moons in this case. Well, we can't quite fine tune it too much more than that. So it's 363, a little bit higher than the other one. Again, about 800 if we keep it loose. So all right, um, I'll just go with this version. I don't know if it's the right side or not. Or whether somehow both sides are wrong, who knows. So on to the make course adjustment in 119 days. And let, let me just see briefly how bad boil off is. I'm pretty sure it's bad. We can we'll see some tick down of the delta V. On the other hand, of course, the delta V will go up as we consume food, water, and oxygen, but I'm estimating that we're losing about one meter per second per hour or something like that to boil off. So one reason these tanks are not going to be released just yet is I have to figure out how to stop that. For now, we can play the trick that I don't know, maybe this won't work if it's tracking it properly, but probably it will that if we just ignore it and go to the tracking station to time warp, it won't have to boil off. If it does, well, we're in bigger trouble. I've still got called NTP tank instead of something more proper though. Yep, somehow we're off of fine controls. No, I don't want that. The RCS is still very powerful around here. Whoa, our uh, hydrogen boil off seems much worse. It might be orientation. We're further away from the sun, but we're like going three units per second now. That's more than it was when we were in Earth orbit. So, yeah, I mean, look at the mass ticking down second by second. That's rough. And, yeah, it's just straight up boil off, because when I turn off the RCS, of course, there's no liquid hydrogen RCS. I think I'll just conduct a burn right now just to avoid boiling off too much. So just make sure the fuel is settled and ignition. There's got to be some way in real fuels to tell it, hey, this is a zero boil off tank. I, I'll have to check that out. It's all basically a matter of using the power available to cool the propellants, which is Actually, not that much. It doesn't take that much. This maneuver is no longer sensible. Uh, okay, it looks like we're a bit off on our plot. Uh, hold on on that. 
Okay, 206 will be good. Hopefully, we'll see. Uh, let's continue burning now then. Okay, kill rotation, and let's see what's going on now. We're doing it a little bit early. I probably should have changed the time on the node as I was adjusting it. But we'll see what happens. Up oh, there, there it comes. Orange line. Okay, we'll just do the rest with RCS. Oh, wait. Uh, no, come back. <laughs> Gosh, the RCS. Okay, this way, this way, this way. Okay. Okay, off. All right, we'll take that. Now, to be honest, I've neglected something. Uh, they actually wanted to get into probably a lower orbit than we're aiming for when we come to capture around Mars. They wanted a one-day orbit, one Mars day orbit. So that's one soul. And that's probably another reason why their burn is larger than the one I originally plotted. So we'll see what it takes to get to a one soul orbit around Mars. So first of all, we've got a good periapsis. Let's take a look at the mission again. Okay, so technically in Mars SOI, though I don't know if we could spot the red planet. No, not at the moment. So, uh, it's two days, seven hours, and 15 minutes to that periapsis. And we'll want an apoapsis that's two days, 19 hours, for it to be one soul. So that's too long. It's not too bad. Uh, it's just another 100 meters per second, basically. So we'll get to their specified orbit. I mean, it's not really... The, probably they wanted to be in line with Phobos and Deimos, maybe. I don't know. I don't know the specifics, but... Um, they said a one soul orbit, so we'll get into a one soul orbit. Fine. I don't know if they wanted a circular one, or whether they're alright with capturing on a low periapsis like this, but that the low periapsis we're gonna do. Okay, uh, considering the boil-off rate... Oh god, it all boiled off. Uh-oh. Hey, wait a sec. It didn't boil off when I time-warped in the, in the tracking station before, but now it decides to boil, all, all boil off? It lulled me into a false sense of security there. Hmm. Hold on, I'm gonna review the video and sneak the fuel back in. <laughs> I I do not accept this. I'm gonna have to figure this uh, this nonsense out. Suddenly it boils off everything and yeah. Well, anyway. Okay. I mean, it seems like the boil off is worse around Mars than it is around Earth, which is. I mean, uh, when I say around Earth, I mean at high orbit, not within the radiation belts and all. That's a whole other thing. But uh, yep. Okay. Let me take a look and see how I can fix this without like reloading the save. Okay, so I restored the liquid hydrogen levels to where they were uh, after the mid-course adjustment, but it's boiling off pretty quickly and I just want to see um, if we were pointing in a different orientation whether it'll be better. So let me make sure I'm controlling from there. And we want sun down. Ends up being... Oh, they turned off fine controls again. So it's about three units per second otherwise. Uh, nope, it doesn't seem like keeping the tanks out of direct sunlight helps at all. Which also means something for that sun shield that we have on the Aces tank. Again, lots of stuff that needs to be figured out for any of this zero boil off stuff to work. But yeah, they're in the dark right now, but they're still boiling off at the same rate. So... Uh, I'll track, try and tracking station it, and we'll see whether that works or whether it all boils off by the time we get to uh, periapsis. Yeah, at a rate of three units a second, I don't know how much ahead of time I want to go back to it. We'll see. Let's see if this works. Okay, no, no, back on fine controls you go. We did lose a whole bunch. Okay, I'll, I'll just restore it again. 
otherwise, we definitely don't have enough to get back home. And I want to try and see that if we can get enough to return or not. Probably I'll have to restore more later anyway. But anyway, we'll get the numbers as close as possible, pretending that it's zero boil off. Okay, we're close to the Mars. I restored some of the fuel, but it's boiling off really fast again. So we'll see. We are turning towards the node. And inevitably, there will have been some boil off. I, I think I didn't account for the boil off. Some of it must have happened on the trip between Earth and the mid course adjustment, though it wasn't so severe that I noticed. But, uh, yep. Oh no, I wanted to keep turning. Okay, this should be about the right time to start the burn, so ignition. And the uh, purple pink magenta puffs. A little bit more pinkish and peach right now, but uh, there they go. Okay, we have captured and we're bringing the period down. Okay, so 24 hours, 39 minutes, and 35 seconds it's supposed to be. We're some seconds more than that. Uh, so, but here we are in more or less a prescribed orbit, though probably it's supposed to be polar or something. Anyway, uh, but we have let's say 400,000 units of liquid hydrogen and so that's what I want at the end when we go back. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have enough to actually capture around Earth when we go back. I don't know if we have enough to transfer with this 1900, we'll see. So Mars to Earth, uh, we do have an insertion burn that we will want to do. Looks like it expects uh, 6,000, but that's to a low orbit. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be accurate. Let's just say no insertion burn. Uh, 2,259, it's saying. And that's a long ways off. I think we actually want the one over here. It's too many years we'll run out of food. Okay, 2,490. So what that means is, if it's right... Uh, possibly we are on the wrong side, but what does Mechjib have to say? It too could be completely wrong, but let's see. Lowest delta V, ooh, 2,860. But that's because this was expecting, so we must be on the wrong side. Let's create note and see. Departure in two years, 347 days is also, it's over here. It's too long. We, we, want, we want this one. Yeah. Yeah, okay, we're on the wrong side. It's going out like that. We don't want that. That's that would be that's why it's costing so much. You can see it doesn't take much to break orbit, but this is fleeing us uh, actually It's just bad timing cuz that's, we, we only need 800 to get back to Earth if it was from our periapsis right now. It's because we're on the wrong side that we don't have it proper. No, 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 don't time warp. Oh, there goes all our fuel. <laughs> I accidentally clicked the time warp to node button. Well, we... That's in 826. Well, that would be about right. Let me see. How much food, water, and oxygen? One year and... No, we don't have quite that much. Shoot. Uh, and even if we get... Let's see if we can get an encounter and what the capture amount would be. But this is just an off sort of situation. So we got to Mars, but... I need better planning in order to really close the deal here and bring it back to Earth. And of course, fix the boil off situation. So we have an Earth encounter, but it's pretty oblique. And the mid course adjustment costs about as much as the one that we did to get here. So, yeah, we're talking about 1400 and then 
another 700. So basically similar to what they had plotted initially. Uh, and it's just taking longer to get there. If we do this, the amount it takes to capture around Earth is a 3,000. So yeah, this isn't worth it. Let's see if MechJeb just does what MechJeb wants to do here. And then hopefully this is a nice approach. It looks like it from the way it's curving our orbit. And it's also only in 620 days, which would be within our food availability. But here we capture, and that only costs 1,100. So right now we are a bit off on delta V, and maybe some of that was boil off that I didn't notice, and some of it is just um, bad maneuver execution perhaps. There is some delta V that I'm not accounting for in the MMH and NTO, but it's probably not that much. I mean, we're talking about we're off by more than 2,000. So, yep, more work needs to be done for this sort of mission to work out for us. Or, you know, somebody could tell me that there are lighter tanks that are zero, zero boil off. That'd be nice. Any amount that we could take out of the tanks would be helpful. Oh, there is one other minor thing. Uh, that's that we'll have food gone and mass from the food and water and oxygen will have gone away. So we'll actually have more Delta V like that. We've already lost, uh, remember at the end of the burn I said, oh, we have about 400,000 liquid hydrogen. Just while I was plotting, we lost 40,000. So, wow. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, in 333 days, where our Delta V, well, actually, you know what? Let me just dump a whole bunch of food, water, and oxygen and see how much we gain from it. So this would be, let's say, how much we have after we wait for the node, and still we don't have that much. It didn't really increase by that much. So, yeah, the vehicle drive mass is still pretty darned heavy. If we take it without the fuel, we've got the fuel down there. Uh, so right now, all the propellant is about 26 tons, and the drive mass is 105. So anyway, but uh, this is the situation right now. We'll need to refine this. Maybe we need another one of these. Maybe I need like an advanced one. This is tank for NASA NTP architecture. Maybe we need tank for NASA NTP, NTP architecture version 2, which is somewhat lighter than these version 1 tanks. But my focus is going to have to be trying to figure out how to stop the boil off from happening on tanks that are not supposed to have boil off. But anyway, so there we have it. It got around Mars, but it needs some work. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time. So just a little addendum, because I reverted the save and I noticed our boil off, and you can see we're in high Earth orbit right now, and the boil off is 0.01 per second versus 3 per second, so 300 times this, that we had around Mars. So I, I just straight up think that there's something wrong with that, but yeah, it'll take some investigating. So just the little coda, we'll figure it out.